we're going to get started here in just a few seconds. If we could begin to just make our way into the sanctuary and get ready for all that God is going to do in this service. Again, let's make our way into the sanctuary this morning. We'll be short starting here shortly. Will be 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. The noise mission Sunday again. Amen. I'm hoping you guys not pouting up your mouth. I'm coming to look morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping we realize that whatever we're doing, we're doing it unto the Lord, okay? Yes. Amen. And um, I just want to remind us. Um, fact, fact matter, I just want to tell us, if you're not short, run down of how your money is being spent, that means it's not really going in vain. Amen. So today we're going to focus on the Ukraine mission and the Pacific Ocean missions. Amen. To which you know, or we have our monthly contribution every month. And it's a commitment. We have to really help them as much as we can. Amen. Yes. Amen. Since the war began two years ago in Ukraine, the people have been blessed to say that the Apostolic Church has never, you know, been injured. Nobody has ever been killed. Nevertheless, there are many people still trapped in houses. Yes. Lord. 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 They had over 3,500 3, refugees that have been kept in, you know, places that they cannot go. And, but with, along, alongside of that, they have Sunday service and Bible studies every week and up to 28 attendants. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. They, they're craving our prayers and our continued support. Amen. Yes. Yes. The Pacific region are doing a fantastic job and mission at this time. They had in one home Bible study, 26 persons baptized in the name of Jesus. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. And 10, 10 children dedicated to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In March of this year, they had a general conference. 16 deaf persons attended, and all 16 received the gift of the speaking in tongues. And um, they had 46 enrolled in the Bible college, because they know they have a Bible school that they teach. So 46 persons were enrolled. Amen, that's good. Last year they baptized, in general, they baptized 18,847 people. And yeah. 12,917 received the gift of speaking in tongues. Woo! That's in 2023. Oh the Pacific region served over four, 464 million people, and they have 26 Amen. island nations. Amen. So, you know, people, they have various language, various traditions, various cuisine. So that's the total for the Pacific region, total amount of believers so far. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us pray now for, we're going to pray for the outreach nation that the UPCI has not yet been able to reach because of laborers and financial support. Amen. So we have to pray for the Lord to send laborers and we have to do our best in our contribution to help as much as we can. Amen. Nothing be poor, you know, as long as we pray, to pay, we pay dedicated, you know, we pray sincerely, we pray effectively. The Bible said effective power to righteous man avail it much. So we just also continue to pray for these nations and that the Lord will come through for them. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It we have just a couple more announcements here this morning. Um, please don't forget our midweek uh, events. We have prayer meeting every Monday at 7 and our midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. This Wednesday is going to be uh, especially exciting, not that we don't absolutely love hearing pastor, but we have some special speakers uh, this Wednesday, some of which we have never heard from behind the pulpit. So. It's very exciting, so please uh, come and be a part of that this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, discover purpose. Um, if you were here for module one last week, please join us again this week. Or if you were not here, uh, but you would love to just hear more about the church, uh, please stay uh, after service just for 20 uh, or so minutes uh, after the service for the Discover Purpose. And also, if you've been through Module 1 and you want to do Module 2, I know we announced it last week, but it was postponed uh, to this coming Saturday, 
uh, April 20th. So if you'd like to go through the second module, uh, please see Pastor about that, but it's going to be on the 20th at 6 p.m. Also, uh, we have a youth rally, a Section 10 youth rally this Friday. It's, uh, you know, the section is rather large, so sometimes the events are a little bit far away, but this time it's really nice. It's just in Fort Pierce. It's going to be at 7.30 p.m., and Sister Baptiste is going to be speaking there as well. So we want to just go support our young people, get our young people there if we can, um, and let's just have a good time in the Lord there. And then also, speaking of the youth, next Sunday is youth class. So let's get them there on Friday and then back on Sunday for youth class. At this time, if I could have our ushers come forward, and if we could stand, we're going to say a prayer over our offering this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we thank you so much for this opportunity to give today, Lord Jesus. And we've heard Sister Gutsmore talk just about how important, hallelujah, our giving just to missions and to your kingdom truly is, God. And we just pray, Lord, that you would bless this offering and use it for your kingdom, whether it's here or abroad, mighty God. And bless it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can bring your offering forward this morning. continue in worship you know we sang about how you know when we get to heaven you know the tears are going to be wiped away and it's going to be a glorious time hallelujah but we get something so special while we're here on earth and that is a small taste of what that's going to be like because when we're in the presence of the almighty god hallelujah there is peace there is hope, there is relief yes. from all of these Amen. things that we face, the burdens that feel just so heavy. Hallelujah, we can come into his presence and just allow God to lift them, allow God, hallelujah, to bring that joy and that love, hallelujah. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, we are here in the presence of God, a God that can do anything, a God that is living, a God, hallelujah, that is able and willing to heal, to deliver, hallelujah. So as we sing this song, if there is a need, I just pray that you would just, just bask in the presence of the Lord this morning.
Jesus in the street. 
certificates to give out. Let's clap our hands for Pastor Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I apologize. I probably look like a wreck, but that's what that's how you look after you get done worshiping a lot of times, right? Hallelujah. If I looked all composed and everything like that, you probably wouldn't want that. Praise God, because it's better if I'm a worshiper and praise yeah. the Lord. I'm just so thankful. Isn't it? This service been incredible so far. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Uh, if you could, let's all stand to our feet. I won't have you standing very long, um, but I do have the great honor today to present a few certificates, and um, I've got much more we won't be able to hand out today. Uh, there are several people that are not, uh, it wasn't able to come this morning that I have certificates for, but I do have one that I'm very excited to, to give out. We're a little behind in some of these certificates, so I don't even know if we've uh, let her know, but Sydney, we, uh, she graduated our module one of Discover Purpose. And Sydney, if you wouldn't mind coming down here, hallelujah, and coming and standing up on this, this platform with me. We are honored and blessed. If you've not attended our Discover Purpose class, you can come stand right up here. Uh, if you've not attended our Discover Purpose class, what it is is it's a, a month long, and every week we do another lesson. 
uh, starting at the beginning of the week, and it's four lessons long. So if you've not attended it, we'd love for you to attend after service. It's about 20 minutes. It's usually directly after service in the back room there. So Sydney Rodriguez came and attended all of module one, and uh, we were so honored and blessed to have her there. So I wanted to give that to you. God bless you. Yes, stay here for a moment. Uh, one thing that we do every time we give out one of these graduation certificates is we want to take time to recognize her, her commitment to, to God and the church. We also want to take a moment to pray over her Amen. because we know that, hallelujah, God has blessed her. God's going to continue to bless her. Amen. Hallelujah. By taking this course and going through this, we hope that she's going to find some place in the church to serve and, and get a part. So we want to pray that God will release her and anoint her right now for service in the kingdom of God. She's already been doing it, but now we're going to do it as a church. Release her and anoint her for service in the kingdom of God. If you could, just point your hands over to her right now. Let's pray for her. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name. Let the power of the Holy Ghost be upon her. Yes, Lord. Jesus. And I pray right now in the confirmation that you have called her into the ministry. You've got a great purpose for her life. And that Lord, you're going to see her through every bit of it. In the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. Release her in the ministry, Lord God. Pour out your anointing and power upon her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How about we clap our hands right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. If there's anything that we can do to see you through this and, and be a blessing to you, you let us know. But I, I threw this on her. She didn't know this was coming today. How about we give Sister Rodriguez another hand clap. Thank you so much, Sydney. And uh, last week, we had uh, um, some amazing things happen. Yes. The week before, we had our baptism Sunday. We had a baptism. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Last week, just kind of out of nowhere, we had another baptism. Amen. But we also had several receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the first time. And our friend, Brother Bob, Amen. who's been seeking the Holy Ghost. I mean, it's been almost a year now, I'd imagine, since he started coming and attending our church. He went to men's conference with the mindset that he was going to get it. He didn't, but then he came here Sunday, last Sunday, and God poured it out upon him. He began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave him the utterance. So today we want to present him with a certificate as a reminder of what God said. Come on up here, my friend. Hallelujah. So this says, this recognizes that Robert Birkino was filled, uh, sorry, Robert slash Bob. Birkino was filled, Birkino. No, uh, Birkamo. Mo, okay, that's an M instead of an N. All right, we'll fix that. Okay. We'll, we'll, you know, uh, do a little uh, uh, whiteout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues on the seventh day of April year 2024. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to present that to you. Hallelujah. I tell you what. Last Sunday, I had a hard time closing out the service because I just kept seeing Bob. Now, we all know Bob is our joy, right? Amen. Amen. But last Sunday, he had a smile I'd never seen before on him. Right. It was such a precious smile. I couldn't even stop it. I kept looking at it. I kept mentioning it. Finally, I said, okay, we just got to pray for this guy because he had such a great smile. That's the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. And God has blessed him. How about one more time? Let's point your hands toward Bob. Let's pray for him again. 
Lord Jesus, we pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit. Continue to pour out your spirit upon him. Bless him, Lord God, in his walk with you as he continues to walk in the spirit of God. Lord, introduce him to the kingdom. Let him be a minister, Lord God, in this kingdom. Release him in the power of the Holy Ghost that he shall be a witness unto you in this city. In Jesus' name. Oh, Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are going to continue to pray for Bob? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bob and Cindy. Thank you so much for doing it. You can remain standing, heading your Bibles in Luke chapter 23. Our Sunday school can be dismissed. Thank you for coming and joining with us today and, and celebrating with us for these uh, exciting milestones for those who are here. And I do want to say, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, we can take care of that today. Amen. Amen. I got one amen. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, we can take care of that today. Amen. amen. Praise God. It just takes about five minutes to change. We've got robes that you can change into. We've got towels you can use. And, uh, and you don't even have to get your clothes wet. I also want to say if you've not been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, God can do it for you today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We've, the precedence has been set. Yes. God is pouring out his spirit. What, what, what's, uh, what's the saying? Get it while the getting's good. Right? That's happening right now. The getting's good around here. And God's pouring out his spirit. God's doing great things. Why don't you give God a hand clap of praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a, a joy and an honor to have each and every one of you with us. Our guests who are here. And uh, our members who are here, so wonderful to see Lisa again. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you and, uh, and all of our guests. It's good to have my mother-in-law with us today. Praise God. Sister uh, Rush, Brenda. And uh, we're honored to have her. I'm always honored to have her here. And uh, she, she attends Pastor Kyle's church there in West Palm. And um, that, that's, of course, where Sister Mian comes from, is Pastor Kyle's church. And and uh, it's just an honor to have her. Uh, how about we get into the word of the Lord today? Amen? Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 23 and verse 13. It says in Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, it's a large crowd, he said unto them, you have brought this man, Jesus, unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, and I have found no fault. Everybody say no fault. No fault. In this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Right. No, nor yet Herod, who also took time to examine him. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise Jesus and release him. Verse 17, for of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. This was a custom of the Jews to release one prisoner at the Passover feast. Verse 18, and they cried out all at once, saying, away with this man. That kind of hurts a little bit. You hear him say that about Jesus. He said, away with this man and release unto us Barabbas. Everybody say Barabbas. Barabbas. Who, 
for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing or desiring to release Jesus, spake again to them. He's trying to convince them, don't crucify Jesus, especially not when you compare him with Barabbas. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, why? What evil hath he done? I have found no coals of death in Jesus. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were instant with loud voices requiring, not allowing him to let Jesus go, but requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Pilate had no choice. He gave sentence that it should be as the crowd demanded. And he released unto them that man who was there with seditions and murder that was cast into prison whom they had desired and he delivered Jesus to their will. They demanded, we don't want Jesus. Give us Barabbas. Today I want to preach to you, and I've got a heavy heart. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know this is the will of God. I want to preach for a little while on give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. If we can, let's put our Bibles down. Let's talk to the Lord, oh God. Lord Jesus, I see the heaviness you've already just laid over this congregation. I thank you for the outpouring of your spirit we've already felt. But Lord, I pray that right now you would release me in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, to speak and communicate your word that it will release this congregation from bounds and chains that they have on them. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, in this place that there will be burdens lifted off of this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. amen. Before you're seated, would you do me a favor? Everybody shout, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. God bless you. You may be seated. I know that might have felt weird, but give me a moment. Let me lay a foundation for this sermon. Barabbas is mentioned in all four of the Gospels. Of course, his role in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is so significant. Matthew 27, 16 calls him a notorious prisoner. He was very well known for his injustices toward the Roman government. Barabbas was said to be a robber, a murderer, and a rebel. The Bible does not try to paint him in a good picture. Some people have suggested he was fighting for the Jews against the Romans. That's why they imprisoned him, and that's why the Jews wanted to release him. If that would have been the case, I think that the writers of the Gospels would have spoken kindly, more kindly to him, would have heralded him as a hero of some sorts. But we find in Luke's writing specifically, he has no issues calling him a murderer. This was a man not respected. He was a man that was considered Someone you didn't want to be around. Someone that was a sinner. Someone that had done great injustices against the people. So you've got almost like a choice. And we'll talk a moment about it. It wasn't exactly a choice, but in, in, in our eyes, we see a decision to be made. Do 
we release Barabbas or do we release the Christ? On the Passover feast, during the Passover feast, it was custom that one prisoner would go free. It was a special pardon that only Pilate and those in the Roman government could offer. Now we're familiar with this. We've got certain customs in our society today. We know the president has special powers in order to pardon. And in this situation, Pilate had the power to pardon anyone he so choose to be worthy. And certainly Pilate was doing it and this custom was created in order to appease the Jews. He wanted to make them feel better. He wanted to make them feel happy. He wanted to make sure they felt like they had a voice in the justice system when in actuality the Romans had all the power. So when he presents Christ for release, he's trying to sway them into choosing Christ. But instantly they say, no, we do not want Jesus released. We want the robber, the murderer, the rebel, the one who's caused havoc in our society. So much so that he's notorious for his injustices. We choose Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. And what should we do for Christ? Crucify him. What has Christ done? For I have steeped him unworthy of any sort of punishment. Why would you put Jesus on the cross? His words fell short as the crowd even the more lifted up their voice and began to shout, Crucify him! Crucify him! Oh, but if we today can look at this story, we could see they didn't know at that time what they were doing. But today, we should be thankful that they shouted, crucify him. Yes. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In their day, they did it out of ignorance. But today, looking back, we recognize this was the plan of God. And that Jesus had to be crucified. And Jesus had to go on that cross. So today, we can't be thankful that they said, give us Barabbas, but crucify Jesus Christ. By doing so, Jesus took on a special role. That's right. This would be a role that he'd play in the whole of his crucifixion, but it's magnified in that moment. You see, in the Old Testament, there was the atonement that needed to be done once a year for all the children of Israel. That uh, sacrifice needing to be done for atonement. It contained two different kinds of sacrifices. One would be a bull or a ram that would be presented as a burnt offering. Right. This bull or ram would be slaughtered and it would be said that he would take on the sins of the people and that bull or ram would die and be crucified. But there was actually a second sacrifice in this ceremony. It was a goat. It would become known as the scapegoat. Everybody say scapegoat. It become known as the scapegoat. This goat was completely different than the bull or the ram. This goat, the Bible says, would take on our sins like the bull or the ram. But what they would do is they wouldn't actually kill the goat. They would go out in the middle of the wilderness, out in the middle of nowhere, and they would release that goat to wonder, never to be seen or heard of again. This was a big deal. Quite a strange 
analogy and, and quite a strange uh, ceremony that they would do. But we would see how that would come to align perfectly with what Jesus Christ has done for us. Right. You see, yes, Jesus took on our sins and died on the cross in our place. But what he's also done is he served the role of the scapegoat. And he took our sins as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. When he was crucified, he took my sin and your sin and he pardoned us and took it away as all oh, somebody needs to rejoice in the Lord today and worship him hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Go ahead and throw up Romans chapter 6, verse 23. I know we've been preaching on this over and over again, but give me a moment. We're going somewhere with all this. Yes. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. Who deserved death? Barabbas or Christ? Barabbas. Barabbas. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Barabbas deserved it. Barabbas, it would have been justice for him to have death. It would have been justice for him to have to pay for his injustices to society. It would have been justice for him to have to pay for his sins. But Jesus Christ came and instead of Barabbas having to pay for his sins, he was pardoned. And Jesus Christ, who had done no evil, who had done no sin, he took on the payment of Barabbas' sins and for your sins and for my sins. And he went on that cross and he died a gruesome death and he paid the price for you and for me and for Barabbas. That's the only reason today we can even read and rejoice in this next part. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And here's the thing. He did it without requiring anything in return. It was a gift. Barabbas, maybe you should pay Jesus back for this. How are you going to pay somebody back for dying for you? That's a price you could never pay back. But you see, Barabbas, you don't have to because it's a gift. His mercy has given you the gift of pardoning you your sins. Anybody today know the gift that I'm talking about? The Bible says if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you got to do is confess and say, Jesus, I need your pardon. I need you to forgive me. And he will forgive you. How about we clap our hands? Let's worship the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. And there is a parable that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 18, where he likened the kingdom of heaven unto a certain king, yes. which took account of his servants. And he recognized that one of them had a debt. This debt was so large. 10,000 talents to us seem like, oh, that's a pretty big debt. Well, in our money today, that would be upwards of millions right. of dollars that this man owed the king. Millions of dollars in debt to the king. 
The Bible says that all the wages of our sin is death. That's the payment. That's the debt that we owed. But the king, he could have taken the servant. He could have thrown him in prison. In fact, the Lord commanded him in verse 25 to be sold. Him, his wife, his children, and all that he had in order to pay the price. Sounds a lot like sin. We we'll hardly ever recognize the true price of sin. Right. And we don't realize how much it's going to affect not just me, right. but my spouse, yes. and my children, yeah. and my possessions. Hallelujah. There's a reason why the Bible says the enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't just want to take your righteousness, your sanctification, your peace and joy. He wants to take yours and your families and your possessions. He wants to destroy all that you have. But look at this verse 26. The servant, therefore fell down and worshiped Jesus, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. He humbled himself. He worshiped the king, and he told them, I deserve what I have been given, but please have mercy on me. I will pay the debt. Oh, but look at the mercy of the king. Verse 27, then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed the servant and forgave his debt. He no longer, not only did he not throw him in jail, but he said, you no longer have a debt. I'm going to take on the price of your debt. That's our king. That's Jesus. That's what he does. Did for you and for me. Hallelujah. That's what he's done for you and I. He's had compassion on us. He's loosed us. He's forgiven us of the debt that we owed him. Are you thankful for that today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 8 and 12. Hebrews 8 and 12. Oh, this is beautiful. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Listen, everybody else might remember, but he doesn't. Amen. You might still be holding it close to your chest because you can't forgive yourself, but he doesn't. Right. He Amen. doesn't remember Amen. it. He's not holding it close. When he says he casts it as far as the east is from the west, at what point does east turn into west? It never does. Unless you keep turning back around. That's right, amen. Hallelujah, I'm telling you what, there's some people today, you need to let go of your sins. You need to release it into the hands of God. You need to trust that he's forgiven you, and he's cleansed you, and he's washed you. He has loosened you from the dead of sin. Listen, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven in this place. You're forgiven. He's not holding you to it anymore. You are forgiven, my God. Oh, let's worship him. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. It's time for you to start moving forward. It's time for you to leave that sin behind and recognize he paid the price. And you got to get on with your life. If you keep walking around with that burden, you won't make it far. Let it go. He's already done it. Why haven't you? Amen. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let the past go. Let it go. Let the past 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 go. Let the
us go today. I feel like when I felt a call from God that today God wants to loosen some shackles and break some chains. And I've not even gotten to my sermon yet, but I want you to know He's forgiven you. He's forgiven you fully, 100%, without a doubt. No questions asked. He has forgiven you. Why don't you look to somebody next to you and tell them you're forgiven. You're forgiven. That's right. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Amen. You're forgiven. Yes. But that's only half of the parable. That's right. Half of the parable is about the servant being pardoned his debt from the king. The other half of the parable is about the same servant who stepped out of that temple, found someone else who owed him a little bit of money. A hundred pence. A hundred pence in our days would be around, you know, it's in the thousands. Thousands compared to millions is a huge difference. Right, amen. Amen. And what this man did was this man took his debtor, the one who owed him, and he tried to force him at first to give him the money. Man said, I don't have the money. He humbled himself like that servant had done to the king. He humbled himself, yet this servant had not mercy. This servant had not compassion. The Bible says that this servant took him and threw him in jail until he was able to pay back his debt. Threw him in jail until he was able to pay back that debt. Right. Today, I'm going to completely turn this around. This is what I really feel God wants me to talk about. The fact that he has paid our dead off right. and he has forgiven us of so much Amen. and yet we're still requiring payment Amen. a debt from others who have done us wrong we're still holding to their account a debt we're harboring unforgiveness in our hearts. And maybe for some of us, it has developed into bitterness. Because that's exactly where unforgiveness will lead. Bitterness. Don't you realize that he paid your debt and your debt was much greater than what anybody else may have to pay you or owe you. That what you have done against God is far greater than what anyone else has done to you. And yet we are sitting there requiring that they work for our forgiveness and requiring that they pay some sort of price before we'll offer that forgiveness and Jesus is sitting over there and he's saying well didn't I pay the price for you didn't I pardon you how would you not turn around and pardon them and that's what the king did. The king heard of what the servant.
servant had done. The Bible said the king took that servant and he threw him into outer darkness. Praise the Lord. He threw him into prison and required that now he will have to pay the original price that he owed. Why is that? It's because he did not extend the same amount of mercy that was given to him. He didn't extend the same amount of mercy and grace that was given to him. Jesus. Pastor, I don't think I can afford to release them of a debt they owe. It cannot be so bold to say that there's some people in this house. Your very identity has become wrapped in unforgiveness yes. for what these individuals have done to you. Amen. It's become not just part of your thought process, but it's become part of the victimhood that you feel for yourself. Today, I'm just telling you, God wants to release you from it. Amen. God wants to deliver you from unforgiveness. God wants to deliver you from bitterness. Uh, oh, I'm here to tell you, I'm going to speak prophetically right now. I believe he's about to uproot some things that have been buried down into the surface. He's about to unroot them and say, I'm taking it out of your life. And it's never going to be a part of your identity again. Because hear me, the cost of unforgiveness is much greater than the cost of forgiveness. The harm you're doing to yourself, to your relationships, and to your walk with God by harboring unforgiveness, let me tell you, it is not worth the price. Somebody say it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it holding grudges. It's not worth it. Come on, people. We gotta let it go with the help of Jesus. We gotta let it go. I had assumed when it came to Jesus and Barabbas, they were given a choice. Barabbas or Jesus. But the fact is, is that Jesus was the only choice. But they called for another man. They called for a man that didn't deserve forgiveness. A man that didn't deserve pardon. And they shouted, give us Barabbas. They yelled out for Barabbas and not for Jesus. And let's be honest, it could have been anyone because no one could have carried too much sin for Jesus not to pardon. But they called on Barabbas. I wonder how many people in the crowd had personally been affected by the sins of Barabbas. Who had personally been affected. I wonder if some of those in the crowd, it was their loved one that he murdered in his rage against Rome. And yet they shouted, give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. And I know today, I'm reading some things into this and I'm turning it around. But they had a conscious decision to release Barabbas, a man known of sin and known of injustices. And they shouted, crucify Jesus. Today, we've got to get to a point where we recognize Barabbas is a a horrible human being, but he deserves the mercy and grace of God, just like you and I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus was willing to pay a price for Barabbas. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mercy. I want to be careful with this, but let me be clear. 
The Bible says he died for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. That means he died for the sins of that person that did you wrong. Amen. He died for the sins of that person. Amen. Amen. That person has just as much access to the grace of Jesus as you and I do. Amen. That's not because they deserve it. Amen. But that's because his sacrifice was so great. Amen. And his love was so grand. Yes. And his mercy extends further than any sin that can be committed. It's the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ that has extended it to them. But the problem is, can we release them? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus pardoned Barabbas. But can we shout, give us Barabbas? Oh. There's some relationships in your life that have been lost because of unforgiveness. Amen. I'm not claiming that every relationship is healthy and should be pursued. But I am telling you, just as Jesus has loosened them, you need to loosen them. You need to come to a place where you can say, if Jesus pardoned them, give me Barabbas. Give me Barabbas. Why in the world would you shout to release a man like that back into your life? It's because Jesus did it. Right. Amen. That's right. That's it. Jesus did it. If Jesus did it, I've got to do it. Yes, amen. amen. This is going to be real simple. It's going to be simple going in. It's going to be real hard chewing on That's and right. consuming it. Luke 6, 36. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven amen See, God didn't just extend mercy to you so that you can spoil it right. and never offer it to anyone else. Right. Amen. But his mercy has been given Amen. to you as currency. Yes. He's saying, I'm going to give to you what you do not deserve. And now I ask you to release Barabbas. I ask you to turn around and to extend that mercy to somebody else yes. that's Amen. done you wrong. Amen. You remember, the Bible says when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You don't need them to ask your forgiveness for you to forgive them. Hallelujah. You don't need them to pursue it. You don't need them to fight for it. Hallelujah. Why? Because then that means you're requiring a payment. That's right. Amen. And Jesus says, I've already given you currency. I've already given you mercy. I want you to use my mercy to pay off their debt for you. Look at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Not only did he pay for our sins, but now he says, as I've given you mercy, I want you to use my mercy and extend it to them. Not only has he pardoned and given us the power to pardon our sins in his eyes, but now he's given us the power to pardon 
them because of his own mercy and his own grace and his own love. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm here to preach to you. It's time for us to release them. It's time for us to pardon them. It's time for us to loosen them. He expects us to use it like he does. Don't you know 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. The love he gave to us, it taught us love. It taught us mercy. It taught us grace. And we cannot turn around and completely ignore the lessons Amen. of Jesus. No, but we've got to take the love of God and then we have to extend it back to him and love him for it. But we also got to love our brothers and our sisters and our family members and our neighbors and our co-workers. He loved me first. Oh, that means I can now love him. That's how it works. Why? We loved him because he first loved us. Verse 20. Next verse. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Yeah. Harbored unforgiveness Hallelujah. will always, yeah. everybody say always. always, it will always hinder your walk with God. That's right, amen. 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 Why is that? Because you can't love God and hate your brother. That's right, right. Amen. amen. And you can't receive God's mercy and not offer it to somebody else. Amen. amen. I know Barabbas doesn't deserve it, but neither did you. Right. Neither did I. Right. I didn't deserve his mercy. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what I deserve. I deserve the fiery hell. Amen. That's what I deserve. Jesus. But he had mercy to me. Listen, you keep getting to this point in your mind, and I'm just speaking just broadly because I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're getting in this point of your mind where you're convinced yourself they deserve it. Right. And I'm not going to fight you on that. They absolutely do. That's right. Just like you deserve hell. Amen. Amen. But if Jesus loved you, and if Jesus forgave you, you and if Jesus had mercy to you, can we not turn around in love and have mercy toward them? Amen. If we can, let's stand to our feet today. Genesis 27 tells us of the story of two brothers. One named the supplanter. He was sneaky. He was easily, he was able to trick people easily manipulate such situations. His name was Jacob. Then there was Esau. I think the greatest sin of Esau was ignorance. He just didn't know. He didn't know the weight of his inheritance. He didn't recognize the value of the blessing. Jacob took advantage of him. You know the story. He came out after 
spending all day working and out in the field and hunting. He came to Jacob and said, would you give me a pot of stew? Jacob knew exactly how to get what he wanted. He said, oh yeah, I can give you a pot of stew, but it's gonna come at a price. Right. So what's the price? The price is your inheritance. That's the price. You see, this all started because of what they did to you and the price they put on you. The manipulation, the deception. It all started because they didn't value you. They didn't love you. They didn't have grace toward you. Esau ignorantly just said, well, what good is my inheritance if I perish? Sold the pot of stew. Jacob sold the pot of stew to Esau. You know the story. Later on, Isaac's going blind. He's not going to be with us much longer. He calls his firstborn Esau in so that he can give him the blessing. When Esau comes in, he tells him, go make me a pot of stew. Make me that delicious meal that I love. Esau goes out. The mom hears about it. Gets Jacob and says, why don't you disguise yourself? Pretend like you're Esau so that Isaac will give you the blessing. You ever thought about just how absolutely wrong that is? I mean, come on. How ruthless can you be? Sure enough, Jacob would put stuff on his arms to make him feel hairy like Esau, smell like Esau, made a pot of stew from stuff not freshly cooked and walked in. Isaac bought it. I don't know. Maybe he didn't care. He just enjoyed the stew enough that he said, well, the voice is the voice of Jacob. The arms are the arms of Esau. And Isaac would give Jacob the blessing that Esau was supposed to have. Talk about an injustice. And I can tell you from that point on, it put a yoke of bondage upon Esau. Amen. As you'd expect, he got angry. He determined in his heart, as long as Isaac's alive, Jacob's okay. But when Isaac dies, Jacob's not going to survive after that. Amen. He determined in his heart, I cannot allow this injustice to happen. He's going to steal from me. I'm going to require a payment. That payment's going to be his life. Amen. I want to read a passage of scripture to you. After Isaac gave Jacob the blessing, Esau returned, recognized what had happened. He begged Isaac for a blessing. Isaac couldn't give him a blessing, but he did give him a prophecy. Verse 39, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40, And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve my brother. Don't you realize that having unforgiveness, all it's done is made you have to live by the sword and made you a servant to that person. Amen. By harboring unforgiveness,
forgiveness, it required you to become even more, pay even more of a price than they took from you to begin with. Look at this. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. When you finally get a chance for revenge, that's going to be the moment that thou shalt break his yoke from off of thy neck. There's a dual meaning here. One that we'll find later on with the children of the Edomites. But I believe this passage of scripture was fulfilled in Genesis chapter 33. In verse 3, Jacob was about to meet Esau for the first time in years and years and years. He was afraid for his life. And look at this. Esau had, verse 3, Esau had 400 men. Esau had the dominion. Esau had the power. Esau could have killed Jacob and his family. Amen. He could have shouted, Release Jesus! Crucify Barabbas! But it says that he passed over before them. And Jacob bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Verse 4. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed Jacob and they wept. That's the moment the yoke was broken. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place. I believe absolutely right now, God's about to break the yoke on somebody's life. A trauma you carried since childhood. God is about to break it off of you in this place right now. Oh, Would you respond right now? I'm finished with my sermon. Would you find a place to pray down to this altar and bring that person down?